Glad to be here. Uh, my name is Andre Chrisman, and, and I'm with Legal Aid Society of Middle Tennessee and the Cumberlands. Uh, and uh, I'm the managing attorney for the Murfreesboro office. We serve Rutherford County and Cannon County. Uh, obviously, I'm delighted to have with me Olivia Lampley. Uh, she's a paralegal coordinator and with our Tennessee uh, Senior Law Alliance. She's based out of Nashville, but she works all in the Middle Tennessee area counties uh, for the offices that are in uh, Middle Tennessee. And so we're glad to be here. We're delighted. Just so you know, uh, we get special funding uh, as Legal Aid Society uh, to be able to uh, make these presentations. Uh, and so your, your information is not going to be sold to anyone. Your information is not going to be given to anyone. Uh, but for us to get the funding it, to say we do make certain amount of presentations in the community to persons or whatnot, uh, the funders are now very uh, uh, exacting. And so they want to make sure in terms of they, uh, what they fund us to do, we're actually doing that type of work. Uh, and so that uh, it, it will be the only reason we share the information of who we've spoken to uh, so that uh, we can uh, show that accountability and get credit for uh, the actual workshops and presentations that we make. Does everyone have uh, the Choices Booklet? Choices Booklet. If you don't have one, will you please raise your hand so we can get that to you? Okay. Okay. All right. We, uh, uh, it looks like everyone has a... Um, a booklet, just a brief blurb about Legal Aid Society, and we're going to jump into this because this will take about uh, uh, will take about the the entire hour to go through. Um, I kind of put myself on a timer, but just a, a brief blurb about Legal Aid Society. We are a general services nonprofit law firm that helps persons, uh, individuals, and families with the basic necessities of life, uh, and um, uh, you have more information uh, on the back of this booklet should see uh, the www.las.org. That is our website, uh, and you can go there. We have uh, legal help booklets covering pretty, uh, pretty much five or six different areas, topical areas such as money issues, credit issues, housing issues, health issues, uh, organized by those topics. It's about 94, 95 booklets that we have that I uh, at last count. So it, they're pretty exhaustive, uh, but they are written in an easy to understand fashion uh, and that uh, they, they don't take the place of legal advice, but a lot of times they can help you know the next steps uh, that you need to take for your legal problem. Uh, and so though that's a great asset. Uh, so if anything you want to remember, remember that. Uh, of course, uh, I didn't bring the purple brochure, which is our general overview brochure, but let me tell you this, and then we'll jump into the booklet. We are right across the street from you. Uh, Legal Aid Society, uh, it's office 526 North Walnut Street. Uh, so we're right across, or we right across either from here, either here or uh, the Westbrook Towers, kind of depending on where you stand, but we're right across the street. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We, 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 uh, we're open for phone calls. Uh, we close the last hour of the day for administrative work uh, and so that you can easily reach us uh, and uh, you can set up an appointment or whatnot and we'd be glad to see if you have a legal problem where we can provide help. But I just wanted you to know we are right across the street from you and uh, we're proud to be this close to uh, Westbrook Towers and uh, St. Clair Senior Center. All right, we're going to jump into talking about uh, applying for choices to pay for your care in a nursing home or your home. Uh, and uh, as I was talking with the lady at the beginning, uh, choices is part of the 10 care Medicaid program. All right, how many uh, know that, uh, uh, that uh, nursing home costs are expensive? Either from a family member, friend, loved one, uh, those costs really uh, run, uh, uh, run uh, the gamut, uh, uh, run in terms of pretty high. And uh, a lot of times, it, 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 is anyone under, under the thought that Medicare will pay for your nursing home cost? Okay, okay. Y'all are a smart group of folks. Um, they, they pay what? For, for, they, they pay for skilled care up to 100 days. Uh, that's what Medicare will pay. 
Uh, but if you uh, have a long uh, uh, term uh, um, illness where you need uh, skilled care, uh, uh, unskilled care or whatnot, uh, and even obviously skilled care after 100 days, Medicare is not going to pay for that. Uh, and so uh, that's a, a kind of a misnomer uh, that some people think, oh, my Medicare will cover uh, my nursing home care, but, but it won't. And so that's why today's uh, presentation, and I want you to stop me at any time. Uh, this is not just meant to be in terms of, I do want to try to get through the majority of the material, but if you have a question, please stop me, and I'll do the best that I can to address it. And I may ask you to speak up because I've been instructed to not leave a certain zone here uh, uh, for uh, the taping purposes. So uh, if you kind of have a, a faint voice, I might ask you to speak up so that we can hear. And that also will benefit the, the rest of uh, uh, the participants here so they can uh, hear what exactly you're asking. But nursing home costs, they reach about $6,000 a month or more in Tennessee. Um, few families can afford this for very long. So Choices is the major payer uh, of nursing home care in Tennessee, uh, and it's part of the 10 Care Medicaid program, uh, which is paid for by the state and federal government. Um, once again, it talks about, you know, many people are, are sometimes under the impression that Medicare is going to cover that cost for me, that nursing home cost. Uh, and that, of course, that's the health insurance program for most Americans who get uh, Social Security payments, uh, but uh, it gives little coverage for, uh, for skilled care in a nursing home. It doesn't pay at all. It doesn't pay at all for non-skilled care that most people get in a nursing home. Um, it doesn't pay at all for p care people need to stay at home either. And of course, we're going to talk about Choices Care today in a nursing home setting or also uh, um, Choices Home Care, home care uh, in your actual home. Uh, Tennesseans who need nursing home care need to know the rules for getting choices, and we're going to talk about uh, that. Many people think they must sell their home before they get choices. Uh, that's not correct. They don't. Many think they leave their husband or wife poor. If they get the choices, that's not true either. Uh, the rules have important protections for husbands or wives uh, who are not in that particular care. And it also protects anyone who is your dependent. Now, you're going to hear this several times, so just uh, get used to it, or you're going to see it uh, several times. I'll try not to, to say it uh, uh, too often, but this booklet uh, uh, explains the basic rules for getting long-term care. We do have a longer, more detailed booklet uh, that's available on our website. Uh, so just as you see on the, uh, the front of your blue booklet, it says the short booklet. I think the one online may be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, uh, somewhere between 50, 85 pages. Uh, so it's more detail. A lot of that detail has to do with some of the actual forms that the doctors who are writing out the evaluations or, or filling that out uh, for whomever is applying, whatnot. It has the actual forms or, or copies of the actual forms that the, that doctor or medical professional is filling out. Uh, of whether that person qualifies for uh, particular choices care. And we're going to go through some of, some of kind of an overview of some of the items that they'll be looking at. So, uh, but if you feel like I really would like to see the entire uh, long-term uh, uh, or, or long booklet of the choices, just go to our website. Once again, there'll be a, a tab that says legal help booklets. You'll click on that uh, and it'll have the options when you click on, on the health section to go to either the short-term booklet, which you already have, uh, or, and also you'll see a, a option for the long-term booklet. This paper is not meant uh, to take the place of illegal advice. Uh, all cases are different and need individual advice. Um, so uh, don't use just the information in this booklet. If you need to know how these rules apply to you, you can talk to a lawyer. Uh, if you need more information, contact your local, your long-term uh, care ombudsman. Uh, and that information is on page 20 of this booklet. Uh, this booklet is dealing with a lot of the change, changes to the 10 care program that happened in 2012. Uh, and so just as it says, we don't know when these rules could change again. We just want to be aware. Obviously, our organization is invested in trying to make sure that uh, we give the most relevant, most current information. And so when that updates happen, 
I promise you we'll be contacting uh, um, Laura or, or the contact here uh, to share uh, another group presentation on those particular updates when they happen. All right, when you talk about choices, choices helps pay for three different kinds of services. Three different kinds of services and they call these groups. Group one is nursing home care. And you're gonna see this kind of like, uh, uh, in terms of severity and, and most care uh, to group three, which is kind of uh, uh, the least amount of care. Uh, you know, care that's in, in a nursing home, uh, uh, equivalent care, but in your home is group two, and then group three is uh, care in your home, but it's not as many hours uh, as uh, group one or two. So first we deal with group one, which is nursing home care. To get these services, you must need help with many things you must do every day. How much help you need is called the level of care. You can get nursing home care at any age. You can get this nursing home care at any age. That's important because you're going to see a difference in the other two groups. Uh, to find out who more, you know, who gets this, uh, continue to read on. Uh, so uh, group one, get any age. It's, it's, group, uh, it's uh, choices care that's delivered in a nursing home. Group two is care in your home or community that doesn't cost more than a nursing home. Uh, can't cost more than a nursing home. Uh, month, once a month. I mean, monthly or? Monthly care, yes, monthly care. Just talking about monthly oh, care. You're using a bigger monthly care every month, what it costs. Yes, it can't, it can't cost, it, well, it, it, whatever the total is, whatever the total amount of care that uh, 10 care has defined, and I don't have that number in terms of the nursing group one care, but nursing group two care can't be cost more than that. I think that's just a simple kind of pragmatic uh, issue because if it's going to cost more than nursing home care to take care of you in your home, then you need to be in a nursing home. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, now, notice here we're going to get into a difference because in group one it said you can get nursing home care at any age. we get to group two, it says you must be 65 or older or be 21 or older and have a physical disability. So if you're age 65 or older and you're applying for group two care, you want it in your home, then that's fine. But uh, if you're less than age 65, um, 21 or older, and even 64 would, would fall in that category, then you must have a physical disability uh, in addition uh, to uh, your age. You must need help with a lot of things you must do every day. These are the same level of care rules as group one. Uh, and Tim, it says, talk, talks about how you can find out more on four and five, and we're going to cover that. So really, as it relates to the actual care, group one is in a nursing home. Group two is in your home. But the qu care is pretty much could be equivalent. You know, it's just in terms of person who's applying for group two is stated, I really want this care in my home. Uh, but in terms of how severe your, 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 your issues are, uh, as relates to a person who's applying for Choices Group 2 and Choices Group 1, they're pretty much the same. Now we're going to go to uh, Group 3, and you see another difference. Group 3 is care in your home or community that costs no more than 15000 a year. 15000 a year. So it's, it's the lowest, really, in terms of level of care on this particular continuum. And when I say that, obviously, you may have a situation where you really don't need as much as group two or group one, you know, so it's not to talk about this category as if it's inferior, you know, hopefully it meets the need of the particular person who's applying for those services, but it's just letting you know, it's not going to go uh, uh, over that. And uh, one big thing to know about group three, and it kind of, obviously it uh, has the same in terms of group three does not pay for care 24 hours a day, you know, as group one and group two do. Uh, and to get group three care, you must be, once again, 65 or older, or be 21 or older and have a physical disability. Uh, so that's a requirement for group three. Here's an additional requirement for group three that uh, makes a difference as well. Starting July 1, 2015, and we know we are past that, uh, the only people who can get group three care are those persons who are receiving 
uh, SSI payments or supplemental security income payments. It's kind of like a, 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 a welfare uh, uh, um, uh, by, by, by our Social Security. It's an entitlement program. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. Well, and the reason we say that in terms of it, 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 it when, we, when, when it's stated like that, we say it because it, it's not dependent on any type of work that's been placed in the system as SSDI, which is a, a Social Security Disability Insurance. Um, not, not to bring any type of stigma to, the, to that particular group uh, or who's receiving the, the, that particular type of income. So who can get choices, Group 1, nursing home care? Well, to have choices pay for your nursing home care, you must be living in or going to uh, live in a nursing home that takes Medicaid payments. Uh, two, you must live in Tennessee. Uh, you must meet the choices, money, and property rules, and we'll see that more, more on page 10. And you must meet one set of the new level of care rules. Uh, and level of care means how much care that you actually need. And there are two sets of level of care rules. If you meet the rules of either set, uh, you meet the medical rules for that care group. So uh, all uh, four things that we just stated uh, uh, concerning choices group one, are they applicable to you? Uh, then you can uh, have choices help pay for your nursing home care. Now, one set of the level of care rules is called the acuity scale, of, uh, uh, acuity scale or, or rule. So just, just, just kind of to, to review, uh, to, to get in terms of meeting the level of care rules, you have these four uh, things that we just went over uh, to get to group one, living, uh, living in or going to live in a nursing home, live in the state of Tennessee, meet the choices, money and property rule, and we're going to address that. And then fourthly, the level of care rules. Now, fourthly, the level of care rules are split, and we're going to talk about the first is acuity or how severe, uh, how severe your particular condition is. Uh, the second way Say you don't meet the severity rules, and we're going to go over uh, the acuity rules or severity rules, uh, or is the safety determination. And so even if you don't meet uh, item four on page three, if you don't meet the acuity scale, that doesn't mean in terms of the game is over. Uh, you might be able to still uh, be eligible for choices group one based on safety determination. Uh, so just understand that. So this is kind of four uh, uh, element four being split into two, and you just have to meet one of the two or uh, uh, the relative years or, uh, or whatnot uh, that's applied. So let's first do with acuity. It means how serious or bad your health problems are. For the acuity rules, uh, Ten Care looks at how likely you are to need nursing home care, how serious your problems are, how much and what kind of help you need with medical care, and how much help you need with activities of daily living. Sometimes you hear them called ADLs, like walking, eating, going to the bathroom, etc. cetera. Uh, so they're gonna look at that. You know, how severe are, 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 you, are you restricted from carrying out these uh, 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 particular activities? So that's, what, that's gonna, what the analysis is gonna be about. Okay, and so when they're gonna look at that, and maybe obviously if you meet the acuity uh, uh, scale, and they say, yeah, this person's really, uh, in some tough shape, they meet they, they meet these particular qualifications. Then you'll meet uh, choices group one. But well, as I say before, if, if you don't make it on acuity, then they'll have to look to safety determination. That's the other set of level of care rules. It's called safety determination. To meet these safety rules, uh, you must have proof that you and others around you cannot be safe if the only help you have is. Well, choices group three services, which is about 20 hours a week of services in your home or in your community. So if you're on, uh, uh, if you meet choices group three, and that's all you meet or whatnot, uh, but you're not going to be able to be kept safe uh, or others around you, uh, then uh, you might be able to, uh, to apply and then uh, uh, analyze your case under uh, safety determination for choices group one and or Medicare skilled nursing home for a short time, that's not going to cure uh, or be able to uh, 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 make you safe. Then they'll look and or care paid for with private insurance. They're gonna go through all these check boxes first and you just gotta recognize that. You know, they're gonna see, well, what about this? What about this? What about if a family member or friends who are willing and able to take care of you? They're gonna look through all of these things. 
or whatnot. We just we just understand it, church. That's how the the state is going to be. Are you talking about will choices pay? Yeah. Well, that, that, I guess that's what they're saying. It, it, it really depends in terms of if you're offering care, if you're offering care, you're the family member offering care to another family member, you know, and, and say, for instance, you know, just kind of giving the example, say that that family member is uh, uh, on SSI. Uh, if they determine, well, you know, your help to this family member, you know, I think that it's pretty good help. Looks like you're keeping them in pretty good shape. You're helping meet their needs or whatnot. So we're not going to approve them under a safety determination for Choices Group 1. They may say, say they can still have Choices Group 3. You know, I don't know. They may still allow them to have that. But what they're basically saying is, is, is if, uh, if, if, if any of these others uh, uh, kind of bullet pointed items, if they can intervene, if we can allow them to do those things as opposed to giving them kind of the most expensive care, which is Choices Group 1. We want to look at those items first uh, before we would award and move them up to the highest level of care. Good question. The new level of care rules are hard to understand. They are. So to find out more about them, once again, it says, see our Longer Choices booklet. Um, it is called the Long Booklet, as we've talked about. It's just a matter of resources. I'd, I'd give that to you all, too. But at 50 to 85 pages a, a, a pop or whatnot, we just let people know where it is, where you can get it, and that you can look at it online. Uh, that, information, and, that information you'll get, if you qualify, I, I got, I've got two booklets. Okay. That somebody qualified and everything, and I've got all the them. Okay. Yeah. Is that the booklet you're talking about? The, the, the booklet that I'm talking about is this exact same booklet, but it more than likely it'll say the long booklet for choices, and it's produced by Legal Aid Society, or at least we have it on our site. I can't tell you that it's not uh, put out there by another uh, uh, agency or whatnot, but we have a, a, a longer booklet on choices, and, and one of the bigger things that makes it longer is because, as I stated uh, previously, it has a lot of the actual forms that you give to the doctors themselves to fill out concerning whether you are are, are, uh, have the particular issues and uh, can kind of walk you through what the doctor is going to be seeing uh, if you're applying uh, for uh, for choices. So that's one big difference. So uh, those are uh, to kind of go back over. Those are the uh, uh, those are the things that they're going to go through to see. Okay, um, you know if they have these. You know, they really don't meet, uh, they don't really meet the safety determination there. They look like they're pretty safe with these other uh, uh, things that we looked at, other in private insurance, uh, that they just need maybe skilled nursing care for a short period of time. They have a family member that can pitch in and help. Then you're not going to meet the, the safety determination and won't qualify for choices group one. If none of these four bullet point items that we talked about on page three, if they're applicable, they say, yeah, still not safe, no family member to help, they don't have private health insurance, uh, yeah, Medicare skilled nursing care, it's going to be a problem that they still have even after those days run out. Choices group three, um, they are, that, that's just insufficient. Then in that particular instance, you would meet uh, the safety determination at, without regard, you know, and, and that's enough to get you the choices group one care, whether you were severe enough or not on the acuity scale. So they're independent. You just need to meet one, one set of rules, uh, and then you can actually uh, receive choices group one care. All right, moving on to choices group two. I know we got a lot of material, but I thank you for your questions and I'll continue to take those. To have choices pay for care in your home and our community. You say, choices, I really don't wanna leave. I've lived in this home for, 40 years, and I don't want to move out. I don't want to go to a nursing home. I want to live, and, you know, when my maker takes me, I want to be in my dress that I've been living in all these years. Okay, they have an option for you. You can receive care at your home or in your community, but these are the requirements that you have to meet. You must want to get this care in your home, not in a nursing home. Must live in Tennessee. 
Uh, we talked about he must be 65 or you must be 21 and older and have a physical disability. And then it gets into that says the choice says that your physical disability means you are kept from using, uh, uh, you cannot use part of your body. Must need help with things like moving around or you need help moving from bed to chair or toilet or bathtub. Uh, four, you must have a family or a friend who cares for you or who checks on you. Uh, they don't have to live with you, but uh, they must at least call to make sure you're okay. And they must be someone you can count on. Uh, so that's important. Must live in a place that is safe for you to live in. Um, must be a safe place for you to get help. The place where you live, number six, must also be safe for paid workers to work in. Uh, I've talked about that. I had a case uh, not too long ago where um, uh, the, the mother was having, had choices care for her adult daughter who had some serious health issues. Uh, and as we got involved in the case, there was a problem with workers going there. And one of the problems of, of workers coming there was she had a little, uh, looked like a, a miniature schnauzer. You know, but the uh, uh, nursing attendants, they didn't want to go to little Schnauzer. He was, he was mean. <laughs> and he'd come and, and start nipping at you or whatnot. And so they had told in terms of the uh, particular care company that that was a problem. And so she had to, she had to get a gate and, and all of that type of thing. Uh, so uh, not only does it need to be safe for you if you're going to get at-home care, but it definitely has to be safe for the workers that are going to be providing help to you. You must meet the choices, money, and property rules, and that's on page seven, and we're going to get to that. And your care at home can't cost choices more than her nursing home care. Uh, this is not just the cost of your home and community-based services. It is also the cost of home health or private duty nursing uh, that 10 care pays for. Uh, home health care that Medicare pays for doesn't count against that limit. And then you must meet, once again, one set of level of care rules for group one nursing home care. And we talked about that. We won't go over it, but uh, as I told you, choices one group, group one and group two in terms of, uh, for lack of a better term, how sick you need to be or how severe your issues are, are pretty much the same. So what we just talked about in terms of safety determination or uh, uh, acuity scale, either one of those, it goes for group one and it goes for group two as well. So that, that's the last requirement. Then it says, are all nine things true for you that we just went over on pages four and five? Then uh, uh, choices can help pay for your home and community-based services. And it tells you what these services can be. Adult daycare, uh, assistive technology, uh, things like hearing aids or computers, uh, attendant care, having someone help with your care, an example, they help with bathing, taking medicine, using machines or equipment. Uh, companion care, having someone who does light housekeeping, fixing meals, shopping, errands. I had a lady who was on these, uh, uh, this particular uh, care and she was receiving it at her home. And she said she wanted to use her hours for persons to run her uh, uh, grocery shopping errands. That's how she wanted to use it. And so uh, that's the way that she used it. The ladies would come in and they would do uh, her shopping for her. For instance, my, this particular client had a doctor's appointment uh, and she actually, even while she lived in Murfreesboro, had a doctor's appointment in um, Manchester. She loved that doctor. She wanted to keep that doctor. So, you know, you kind of balance it out for, for her in terms of, you know, she may save up maybe there may be just a few hours during that one week or next week. But if she has a doctor's appointment in Manchester, that's going to eat up a lot of time, particularly for that person that, that goes with her, stays with her at the doctor's appointment and then comes back. So uh, uh, there's some flexibility in that. And I, I can work on in terms of seeing what the, the, the state rate uh, that they're paying uh, uh, annually for choices one and two. And I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, companion care, having someone who does that, the, the light house, keeping, fixing meals, home delivered meals. Uh, this particular client, she also had uh, uh, meals on wheels or whatever. They were delivering those to her. In-home respite care, someone who comes in to care for you, to give you uh, your regular caregiver a break. Uh, inpatient respite care, a short nursing home stay to give your regular caregiver a break. Um, small changes to your home, such as a ramp or grab bar in the bathroom or shower that can, uh, can help you with your showers. 
uh, personal care visits, having someone to come uh, help you dress, brush your teeth, bathe, do laundry, fix meals, change sheets, those types of things. Um, the, the personal emergency life alert system, uh, this particular client, she, she liked that. That was something that she really was uh, glad to have as a service. Um, pest control to get rid of insects or mice uh, and short nursing home stays. Uh, so those are, uh, you know, if you meet that, those particular nine items that we just went over on pages four and the top of page five, then those are uh, some of the benefits and services that you're eligible for under Choices Group 2. Um, so now we move to Choices Group 3, uh, which is home and community-based services. Um, once again, it's just reminding you that now this particular level of service is, is limited to persons uh, starting July 1, 2015, who are receiving SSI. Now you can see the rules are a little bit different. Uh, you must need help with at least one everyday life activity. Um, just at least one, feeding yourself, going to the bathroom, walking, getting out of bed, using a wheelchair, other activities. So you have to have at least one of those that uh, um, you may be, you struggle with. A doctor must say that you need this. Uh, so you're gonna have to have the medical proof. You must want to get this care in your home, not in a nursing home, live in Tennessee, and once again, the age requirement be 65 or older or 21 uh, to age 64 uh, uh, and have a physical disability. Uh, you must live in a place that is safe for you to live in, once again, because like group two, this is still in your home uh, and uh, it must be a safe place for you to get help and the place where you live must also be safe for paid helpers to work in. So those persons who are providing you care under this category may must be able to be able to access you and assist you um, uh, without fear uh, of their safety as well. And then similarly, I won't go through all of these that you see at the bottom of page six and seven, uh, the similar benefits uh, that uh, are, uh, are available for Choices Group 3 members as they are for uh, Choices Group 2. That, that's for Choices Group 3, yes. Okay, can't, can't. Well, that, see, that explains some mm -hmm. of the, what mm -hmm. I was asking about. Mm -hmm. 20 hours or... Right. What? Sure. They're, 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 Choice Group 3 is the one where it says no more than 20 hours a week. No more than 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. How do you apply? Uh, well, if you already have 10 care, then you call uh, your managed care organization to apply for Choices. The phone number should be on your 10 care card. Uh, don't have 10 care, and the lady was asking me that, about this uh, before we started. Then you call the Area Agency on Aging and Disability, has the number there. It's a free call. Um, and uh, if you can't get choices, they can tell you about other programs that may help. But you would apply, and you can uh, apply through them. And that number is there. What you ex should you expect when you apply? Uh, well, the medical application for choices. Uh, how does choices decide if you need help? Well, uh, they will ask your doctor for information about your health and your need, health needs. That doctor uh, will then fill out a paper called a pre-admission evaluation. Uh, the actual long booklet, one reason it's so long, it actually has a sample PAE uh, form in it, uh, pre-admission evaluation form that the doctor would fill out. Uh, Ten Care uses the information in that form to decide if the care you need meets Choices level of care rules, and we've gone over those. So um, that's what that doctor is going to be filling out, uh, and uh, he's going to be abiding by the things that we've talked about in terms of safety determination, level of acuity. Did you ask for nursing home group one care? Then the area agency on aging and disability, the nursing home worker or the 10 care health plan caseworker must also fill out a PASSER paper, which stands for a pre-admission screening resident review. And this deals with, you know, any mental health uh, issues that you might have or needs that you might have, should I say. Uh, the PASSER shows that if that help can be given in a nursing home or if it cannot. If you want 10 care Medicaid to help pay for your care in a nursing home or in your home. Uh, Ten Care will, Medicaid will use your PAE and your passer uh, to see what level of care you need. 
And of course, level care means what kind of help and how often you will need it. Uh, they will use your PAE and passer to see if you meet either the acuity scale rules that we discussed or the safety determination. Uh, to find out more about the new level of care rules, go to our web once again, and you can see uh, the long care booklet. It will have a sample uh, PAE form. It will have a sample, as far as I know, passer form so that you can see in terms of what uh, the doctor would be filling out on your behalf if you apply or if your family member applies and what uh, also what TenCare will be evaluating. Uh, so you'll see uh, what they'll be evaluating uh, if that doctor fills that out uh, for you or loved one. TenCare decides if they will pay for your care mostly based on your PAE and your passer papers. Uh, and so um, I can tell you just kind of real life application, same client that I was dealing with. Uh, uh, there was a redetermination. We actually had to file and they had to send out a, uh, they sent out a medical professional. She might have been a, a, an advanced practice nurse who came out to go run through a series of tests uh, with my client uh, to see if she still was eligible, you know, for, uh, uh, for the services. And so filling out another PAE because uh, we asked them to redo it again because they didn't score her at a certain level. And I won't get into all the, the weeds about that, but if you do see the long form, it talks about scoring on some of these particular elements. You know, how well is this person able to, to move and, 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 and talk and, and, and do those types of things. And so those have a scale that doctors are filling out and they're giving to uh, doctors or medical professionals are giving to Ten Care. And so they came to my client's uh, uh, home and they kind of evaluated her. And so that's, uh, that's something that's going to be very important uh, for uh, someone who's applying for these services. What if your problems get worse after your PAE or PASSER are filled out? Then you may need to ask your TenCare Health Plan caseworker for a new PAE or PASSER. So that just goes to my example. You know, for some reason, they thought my client had improved. You know, I met with her and, been, and she'd been my client for plenty of time for me to see you know, the struggles that she had, the limitations with her limbs, uh, how hard it was for her to talk, uh, issues with, uh, uh, um, you know, trying to ambulate and get around. And so that nurse coming back, filling out that PAE, sending it back to TenCare was vital. Uh, and, and they reassessed or whatnot. And, uh, uh, um, and so that was helpful for her maintaining those services. Uh, so don't, don't, uh, don't quit uh, if you... Uh, or loved one that uh, is applying for it uh, doesn't get the PAE score uh, filled out by for the physician that puts you over that level that you need for these services. Uh, it may need to be done again. It never help, hurts also. Uh, now, if you get denied, and I'm just kind of giving you this uh, uh, spill uh, in the middle of this, if you get denied, obviously you can come to Legal Aid Society. We'll take a look to see if we can uh, help or assist you with your case. Uh, because we do these types of appeals. Uh, so please know that we are a resource. I think I gave our number. Uh, obviously, we have our uh, longer number. I think it can get you to any office. You just have to tell them the office that you want to be directed to. But I'll, I'll stop right now and give you our, our number uh, at Legal Aid Society right across the street so you don't have to call the 1-800 number. Our number at Legal Aid in Murfreesboro is area code 615 eight nine zero zero nine zero five and so you would call and uh, if you filled out an application uh, for 10 care choices and you've been denied uh, then give us a call we'll see if we can assist or help you uh, in your uh, your case uh, but so a lot of times if you do that you've been denied and you call us and we take your case that would be something that we work to to arrange to make sure a nurse comes back or doctor comes back or, or you're taken to a doctor again to, uh, uh, after a while to see, you know, uh, you know, maybe it was just an extremely good day, you know, when the doctor filled that out on you, but it doesn't represent, you know, the kind of the totality of what you deal with from day to day. That may be a, a strategy that we would say, hey, you know, we need to get a new PA for this person because uh, 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 the first one was not reflected. What if TenCare says you don't meet either set of the new level of care rules, so they won't help pay for your care in a nursing home or at your home? Then you have two choices. 
See if you meet the rules for group three. It pays up to 15,000 a year for home and community services, which works out to about 20 hours a week of care. Once again, the, those rules are you have to be on supplemental security income or SSI. Um, and uh, you must need the at-risk level of care. You must be 21 years of age or older and have a disability. You must need the at-risk level of care, but not the nursing home level of care. Um, so the at-risk home level of care, see these are a lot of ORs, so just understand that, whether it's eating, need he help with eating or walking or going to the bathroom or moving or whatever. So that's a list. In other words, you're dealing with just maybe one issue that you're struggling with because it, it, it's at uh, the person, lowest level of care, the person who may not need as much as is, is in group two and group one. So those, that's what, you know, if you're not uh, eligible for uh, group uh, uh, choices, group one or group two, then possibly choices group three may be an avenue for you. Then it talks about also dementia. Um, um, and that kind of first kind of discussing that, uh, but uh, make sure if, if you're having a hard time thinking well enough to do things like walking or eating, uh, have problems remembering things or get upset easily, that may be in itself uh, uh, an avenue to receive choices uh, three care. Or, once again, this is uh, what we've just talked about, you don't, you're not uh, satisfied with the level that 10 care approved you. Maybe they approved you, but not for choices one or two, they approved you for, uh, to say, we think you might be eligible, or that you're eligible for choices group three, which is the lower, lower, lowest level of care. And uh, you say, man, I'm really having some difficulties. So that may mean, you know, uh, you actually appeal. You know, and that's why I talked about giving our office a call uh, to see if we can intervene and assist you with that. Notice what it says, though, on page 10. You don't have all day, and we have that in bold. If you're going to, uh, you're going to appeal, please don't sit and wait on that because I promise you this, 10 care becomes hawkish on uh, appeal deadlines. Uh, they are really tough on deadlines. Uh, you have to really supply a good reason, a really good reason, uh, that uh, you appealed untimely. Uh, so if you get that denial, and you say, man, I just, just don't think this is the right choice, particularly if you didn't get, you know, for wrong level of care, it means at least you've got some care. But if you get denied totally, that means you didn't, you're not getting any care. They're not going to supply any care to you. Uh, you need to act within uh, 30 days. Uh, you know, my advice is hopefully within a day or so you can see, you know what, I, I think I'd like legal aid to intervene for us or whatnot. Give us a call so that we can start working soon to make sure we have enough time uh, uh, to contact, you know, have all the HIPAA releases that we need to sign so that we can talk to your doctors and things of that nature for you and try to make the best case that we can uh, in an appeal. So please act timely. And that's why we have that bold uh, 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 on page 10. Uh, a family member, it just talks about a family member can help you appeal. You know, if you decide I can do this myself, I don't need legal aid. Now, and of course, our services are totally free of charge. They're totally free of charge. But, you know, you may say, hey, you know, I've, I've got my son, I've got my daughter, they can do it for me. Okay, you give them this book, go, because they need to make sure they are within guidelines uh, and uh, uh, they're sending it to the right place. Uh, so you might share that information if you depend upon them instead of giving us a call. Once again, larger booklet, it's online. And so you can receive that and it will show you more information concerning the forms. All right, now we get into the money and property application for choices. Because uh, the uh, level of care that you need or, or how severe your issue is or uh, safety determination that's not the only thing that 10 care is going to look at. They also want to know what, what finances you have, what resources you have. So um, if you already have 10 care, you don't have to do a money or property application. They already know. You know they already know in terms of what uh, your, your assets, your income levels are. Uh, what if you don't have 10 care? Then you or your family must answer the questions on the money and the property application. Did you start your choices application at the Area Agency on Aging and Disability? And they should help you get the papers together for the money uh, uh, and property application part. They will send your money and property application to 
10 care. What if you did not start your choices application at the area agency on aging and disability? Ask them or your 10 care caseworker where to get help. They will give you a list. How 10 care decides if your income meets the choices guidelines. Well, how much income do you get each month? That's going to be one of the first questions they ask you. Um, some types of income count for getting choices and sometimes some income uh, sources don't. Um, 10 care counts the income that comes in the name, in the name of the person who needs the care. That, that income includes social security payments, pensions, dividends, rental income, etc. That all is, uh, if it's in the name of the person who's applying, that's obviously going to count uh, against in terms of uh, um, uh, the uh, income limit. We haven't received any new information concerning this that uh, uh, to get choice of your income that counts must usually be less than $21.99 per month. Uh, that's uh, what uh, at least the last figure that we have. Ten care does not count these types of income when you apply. The first $20 of unearned income, such as Social Security or pension payments. Um, they don't account veterans payments for someone in the household other than the patient. You know, so if your husband, your wife is receiving uh, uh, VA payments, then those uh, will not count. Um, that was not count against your cap. Uh, VA payments for medical costs, tax refunds, you, know, you get that refund back from the IRS, energy assistance payments, you know, some of the persons that we talk to, they're receiving low-income home energy uh, assistance payments uh, to help them with their utilities. Those uh, will not count. And then payments from credit disability insurance policies. Uh, so those uh, resources uh, outlined on page 11 won't count against you. What if you don't have enough money to pay the nursing home without choices? You may be able to get choices anyway. This is true even if your income is too high for choices. Uh, but some or all of your income must go into a special kind of trust uh, and that is called a qualifying income trust. Uh, you might uh, hear it also referred to as a QIT. Uh, income and the trust doesn't keep you from getting choices but it goes to help pay the cost of your care. To set up this trust, you need a lawyer trained in elder law. Um, now, one thing that ten, uh, uh, we're, we're back doing at Legal Aid, we'd had a, a little bit of a, 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 a uh, let's say vacation, but uh, uh, we had not done this service and had been referring persons to uh, the Tennessee Justice Center. They picked up the gap, but I think we're back on doing uh, qualified income trusts. Uh, and so if you need that, that's a special trust whereby you make just a little bit too much uh, that puts you over the cap for the Choices Program. And so what they do, if you uh, will go to your bank, say you've qualified, you've, you've, met, the, uh, uh, you've met the medical issue, so medical is not an issue, uh, but you still make a little bit too much income. Maybe it's your teacher's pension and in combination of your social security and whatnot is just kind of putting you above the cap limit. Well, you can call Legal Aid Society and, and uh, we can touch base with you. We'll tell you to call your bank uh, because it's set up at your bank. Uh, some banks are really open to this, some are not. You know, so, so give us a call because some banks, it's really not anything that they want to do. Uh, um, I don't think they make a whole lot of money on these particular accounts. Uh, but uh, we can ask them, do they uh, do uh, uh, QIT trust accounts? And those accounts will have money that's deposited into them. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll make sure we'll work with your caseworker to make sure that your portion of your check that is uh, 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 or, or enough of your check that's putting you over the income limit goes into this particular trust. Uh, and then uh, once that is put into that uh, qualified income trust, that no longer makes you that no longer but money counts against the cap. And so you're now under the cap. And uh, of course, we're going to go through some things. There are certain things, just kind of how all the rules are. It's a benefit for you to be able to still receive the choices care, even though you're over the cap limit, you know, but they let you put your money in this trust. You know, the kind of the counterbalance of that is that 
the money can only be spent in certain ways. Um, and we're going to get to that. Um, if you are, uh, what happens to my income after I'm okay for choice in a nursing home? If you're in a nursing home, you get to keep $50 uh, per month for personal needs. So uh, if you have, you know, $200 in this uh, particular QIT, well, you can keep $50 for personal needs. You need a robe or, 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 or some house shoes. Um, if you have SSI, then you can keep $30 a month. If you get veterans pension, they'll let you keep $90 per month. But this is what happens to the rest of the income in that particular trust. So say you've had that trust set up at your region's bank. And so you get to $50 for your personal needs. And so what happens with that other $150, Andre? Well, part of it may go to your husband or wife if you're married. Uh, part of it goes to any dependent family members living with your husband or wife. Dependent means you're paying their, their living costs. Part of it can go to pay your Medicare and health insurance payments because uh, some people still have that premium. Uh, part is set aside to help pay certain medical costs not covered by health insurance. And the rest is paid to the nursing home. That's where the lion's share more than likely will go, uh, is to the nursing home to cover uh, uh, any outstanding uh, uh, bills that you have with the nursing home. And of course, they call that the patient liability. The 10 Care Choices case workers figures out how much of your income goes for what. So. Uh, you're not uh, uh, you're not left having to try to figure that out. What happens to my income after I'm okay for choices for home and community based care? If you are the person who needs help, if you are the person who needs help, is your income less than twenty one ninety nine uh, a month? Then you can keep all of your income uh, for your personal needs. Choices pays the full cost of your home and community based care, so that's a great benefit. What if your income is more than $21.99 a month? You get to keep the first $21.99 of your income for your personal needs. Uh, this is what happens to the rest. Uh, as I said before, kind of you have to get that QIT set up uh, so that you can still qualify. Income your husband or wife at home can keep after you are approved for choices. Choices let your husband or wife at home keep, cert keep certain income. Uh, person at home may keep the higher of all income paid in her name, uh, all income paid in her name plus some of the patient's income. She gets what takes to bring her income up to $19.92 per month. Uh, are her monthly housing costs more than $597.60, which in uh, Rutherford County more than likely so, uh, then she can keep more of the patient's income. Uh, she can keep enough to bring, or he can keep enough to bring their income up uh, to two thousand nine hundred eighty dollars, uh, house uh, call, housing costs include rent of house payments, uh, taxes, insurance, uh, lights, heat, and water. So you ask, what if you have power of attorney? Yeah. Okay, you have power over attorney of of the person the person who's in choices care. Yeah. Uh if you if if you are if you are the person at home, and you have power of attorney of the person who's in ch under choices care, um, in the same home, yeah. in the same home. Uh, I I don't know if that really makes a a, a difference in terms of assets or whatnot, uh, or or what you well, can keep. Five years, right? Well, that, uh, we haven't got to that yet. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. So just be aware of of what we had here. Uh, right before we get to the bottom of page 14, uh, which talks about that it's not an automatic if your spouse is at home and you're in choices care or vi vice versa. Uh, uh, your spouse is receiving the choice care and you're at home, uh, that you do get to, to live out your days in the home uh, even after the, the spouse, you die and the spouse die. Just know that 10 care after both of you pass away, they're going to try to get recoupment for any outstanding expenses that have not not been paid for. Okay, that brings us to 14. 10 care, tell 10 care about all of your property assets. And I know we've gone a little over, but we start a little bit later. Was any property sold or given away in the last five years? Be sure to tell 10 care choices worker about that. Uh, they have what they call a look back. You can be charged with a crime if you know, but you don't tell choices about your property or you don't tell choice about something that was given sold or traded away, or you hide important facts 
about what you own. Uh, so it, it's important to be candid. It's important just to know this in advance uh, that they're counting from from five years from the time that that you apply. So that that's important to, to be aware of. And I don't know if that answers your question or not, sir. Okay. What if you have too much in property that counts for choices? If you have too much property for choices, you can spend the property as you wish, but giving away or selling property for less than a fair price can cause serious problems. Uh, so be aware of that. Um, are you married and applying for choices in, in, in a nursing home? Then your husband or wife at home can keep any property that choices does not count and the highest of the following amounts. Uh, is the property bring, uh, that brings in income, for example, a house you rent to someone? Then at home husband or wife can keep enough once again to bring their in income up to uh, 1992 per month. In some cases, your husband or wife could keep more. Many times this rule lets your husband or wife at home keep all of the property. And then it gives these amounts or $23,844. That was the amount uh, as of 2015. We hadn't seen that updated. Or half of the total property and savings in the snapshot assessment up to a $119,220 or an amount set by a court or administrative law judge. Does the husband or wife have special needs like high medical expenses? In these cases, judges can set a higher amount if they feel it is necessary, but it'll have to go through uh, a judge or, one, or, or a court. Important choices rules about selling or giving away savings or property. Giving away income, countable savings or property or a home can cause problems. So selling or buying property in some cases, this is called a transfer. If your accountable property or savings are transferred, you can be kept off choices for a while. So once again, what they're trying to do is they're trying to forget, you know, this is to prevent fraud. You know, this prevent fraud in terms of I give my home to my, my son or I give my home to my, my daughter or whatnot so that I can be eligible. I transfer them. I don't really sell it to, uh, to them for any, any value at all. Um, so for those types of things, always get the advice of a lawyer. Uh, do this before you transfer money or property that might affect if you can get choices. And don't just get any lawyer. The lawyer needs to know this area of the law well. And that's important because you, know, you don't want to be facing any type of fraud charges or whatnot. Uh, you don't want uh, 10 care coming after you. Um, and it gives a, a few situations where there will be no problem. If the property was sold for a fair price, fair market value. Now, no steal in terms of you sell that home, or when you say, well, Andre, I'll go ahead and sell my home. Now, your assets will count against you. So it's just letting you know, even if you sell your home, you still have to sell at set at market value. You know, once you, you receive the proceeds of that home, those proceeds will count against you, so you may not be eligible until those are, uh, those are, are liquidated. The property was transferred to the husband or wife. This is because all assets of married couples are counted, no matter who owns them or the property was transferred to your child or any age uh, who is blind or disabled, or the property was transferred more than five years. Once again, that five year look back before you applied and met the rules for choices. This is also true for money transferred to or from a tr trust. Uh, so that's not a problem if it was more than five years before you applied and met those rules uh, for choices. The property was transferred to a special trust for a disabled person uh, under uh, age 65 or qualifying for choices was not the reason for the transfer. Of course, that would be very hard to prove because uh, the penalty would cause undue hardship uh, for the nursing home patient. I think you'd have to prove uh, that, and that's hard to prove. So once again, last, uh, last page and a half, people talk about choices. Well, the state's gonna take my home. The state may take the patient's property after her death or his death. Uh, most of the time, the state tries to get paid back from money and property when you leave, when you die. Uh, they try to get back the cost of choices care uh, uh, that you got after age 54. They also try to get back the cost of nursing home care the state paid for. But they can only do this after you die. They can only do this after you die. Remember this, if you remember anything, they can only do this after you die. And because we know the, the, the rumor floats out there, we're going to be homeless. You're going to put my spouse out. You can put me out. They can only do this after you die. It's the law. 
Uh, this law is called estate recovery. Uh, so it's important to make sure we separate truth from fiction. Your things can stay in the family longer if you can leave them to certain relatives. By law, the relatives listed below can have your money or property when you die. The state won't try to get paid back until they die or the child reaches age 18. The law calls these people exempt family members, your husband or wife, or a child of yours of any age if they were blind or disabled before age 21, or your child under age 18. And then it says in a few other cases, you can, can give your home to your child or brother or sister. Once again, it's important for those of you, and I know we have uh, persons in here with, with income and assets, before giving your home to them, see a lawyer who knows Medicaid transfer law. Uh, if this isn't done right, it can cause you tax and other problems for you and your family. Are you leaving things to someone that the law lets keep your money and property until they die or reach 21? Make sure they know to fill out a 10 care request for release paper. If they don't, the state will take your money and property from them anyway. They can get the release paper. It has the, the, the actual website link uh, to re, uh, receive that request for release paper uh, so that that person uh, that you have staying who's at home while you either you there or you're at home while uh, a spouse is there, they can make sure that they're covered and they don't have anything taken away from them um, while their uh, loved one is in uh, choices care or, uh, and they're living in the home. Once again, what if 10 care turns you down for choices care? You have 30 days to appeal that decision and uh, just make sure you know that if you have a loved one or family member, son, daughter helping you, and if you want help from legal aid, please come see us across the street or give us a call at the number that I gave you, 615-890-0905, and we will see if we can assist you. Um, the last page is just a list of uh, persons who are uh, uh, ombudsmen and persons uh, uh, who are associated with the uh, Mid Cumberland Human Resource Agency uh, that help seniors. And uh, so I just wanted you to have that as a resource. Are there any questions? I know we went over a lot of material. Yes, ma'am. What's the typical processing time when you start the application to the date you get a decision? That, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> It, it, it really kind of depends. Um, in the case that I had, uh, it, took, uh, it took a few weeks. Now, this person had already been approved, then taken off because they didn't feel that she met it any, uh, anymore. Uh, uh, but we did actually have to, to, to start from the beginning because remember when I told you that uh, um, uh, uh, deadlines are important? Uh, they they refused on a deadline. I mean, I made the probably most persuasive case I could, but she missed the deadline, so we had to start all over with her. So it was a matter of it was a matter of a few weeks. Yeah. Any other questions that you might have? All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, don't think you had to think of your question today. If you don't, uh, kind of slipped your mind. Give us a call sometime. Uh, you've got our number at Legal Aid Society's Murfreesboro office across the street. Uh, we'd be glad to assist you if, if possible uh, with those questions. Obviously, if you get denied, uh, give us a call and we'll see if that's something that we can help you with in an appeal. Thank you. Thank you.